This podcast is brought to you by StarCharge, the largest EV charging manufacturer in the world, and is also a provider of residential and commercial battery storage and microgrid solutions. And KimPower, the reliable, quick, and scalable EV charging solutions for everyone and everywhere. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Out of Spec podcast. I'm your host, Francie. Hope you're doing well today. I have traveled down to Austin, Texas, but now I am again back at home while some of our team is actually in Las Vegas at the CES show. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So thank you for plugging in for some EV news. So the CES event event is an annual trade show and it's global. So that's something to keep in mind. While it is in Las Vegas, there are companies here that are from all over the world. And that means that there's a lot of visitors from all over the world too. So a lot of people really look forward to this event every year. So much technology. It's kind of just like a total playground if you're interested in anything tech. So it's organized by the Consumer Technology Association. And like I said, it's held every year in January at the Las Vegas Convention Center in Nevada of the US. And New products are announced, new concepts are announced. People are really pitching, look, this is what we're coming along with with our technology advancements. Here's either what we have delivered on or what we plan to deliver on. And of course, the EV topics are discussed here. Some There's less and less automakers, I think, but there are a few automakers that are there really showing off what they're doing. And one of them is Kia. So that's what we are going to talk about today. So Kia has released unveiled their concept called the Platform Beyond Vehicle, PBV, which aims aims to go beyond mobility. So they already have the EGMP platform. And this is another platform that I think is just to run alongside it. I don't think it will replace their other platform. And so this is a modular and customizable electric vehicle platform that is designed to cater to commercial businesses, but also individuals. So it allows for a variety of models, of course, for the EV if it is modular. And I think this design is interesting because, as I'll say later in the podcast when we bring Jordan on to talk about his experience at the CES show, seeing this live and talking to the experts at the CES booth, is that we haven't optimized the way that we build EVs and that also there's a lot of different use cases for vehicles in general, EV or not. And being able to best fit those use cases is really key to transforming our transportation sector to electric because I've I know a lot of people who work in a lot of different spaces that have wanted to go electric but the trucks don't do what they need to or that car would be great with that range but it doesn't have the usability or the space or this or that that I need. So this modular approach approach seems pretty interesting. Of course it's a concept but I think it's interesting to discuss and I want to know what y'all think too. So Kia showcased five PVV concept models, including the PV5 at the CES show, of course, and they're really pushing for this flexibility and modularity. So it's basically seen as a blank canvas, they say, where you can redefine the space and the mobility that you need in your EV based on the different modules that you can put together. And Jordan goes into detail of what he saw, which is like, you can put a truck bed on the back, you can not you can put a different piece on the back and just thinking about how Lego that is really seems like it's a peek into the future. Of course, we want them to be able to do this, but only time will tell. So Kia outlined their three-phase roadmap for their PBVs, which is introducing more models, advanced software, and bespoke services. And their goal is to really push this forward. And Kia has really actually stepped up to the plate in the EV space. Uh, They have delivered on a lot of their concepts like the EV9 and people are pretty satisfied. They are going over to Nax, of course, and it seems like they have a huge potential to maintain a foothold in the market and continue to deliver and really change the EV space, really perhaps put some competition in there, raise the bar and keep that status quo high. They're also really looking at this wider picture of not just make a car and throw it on the road, but an ecosystem. So they say that they envision fostering interaction between the PBVs with the modularity 
with also robotics and advanced air mobility and autonomous driving. So I think this is something that Kia is really doing well in what they're presenting at the very least, which is let's not just keep the scope too focused, but open up to see how all of these mobility devices can interact with each other and move around because we've talked about how cars are going to be able to drive themselves. And then if fleets are electric, then how can we optimize the charging along the way? And all these things that will really are key to making things electric and successful in that, that transition, because it does become more difficult along the way. If you have all these smart systems interacting, how are we going to optimize that? So I think this is a really cool approach from Kia as well. So they also are presenting their concepts, the EV3, the EV4, and then the EV6 GT, and of course the EV9, which is on the road, as well as the EV6, for the EV life for everyone. So we love to see that. And essentially, I love that they're not only going for the lifestyle car, the passenger vehicle, but also the commercialized, because fleets need a bit more help in doing so. So, of course, their presence at the CES event is not surprising, and we are going to bring Jordan on now to talk about his experience seeing the CES show, this booth, and some other things that he's seen along the way that he has found interesting, and hopefully we'll have him on again to recap some of the presentations, press conferences, products that he has seen live at the show. All right, everyone, we are now joined by Jordan, who is at the CES show in Las Vegas, coming at us live from the in-person event. Thank you, Jordan, for joining us. <laughs> Great to see you, Francie. Yeah, uh, live from Vegas. Well, not live, but, you know, I'm <laughs> here. Uh, I can literally see the sphere from the window right here. So it's pretty cool being on site. And yes, Kia has come out hard swinging with an impressive booth. Well, and also one of the more impressive press conferences of the week. There's a lot of press conferences here. This is a week full of them. I mean, probably over a hundred, but when you narrow it down to cars, that's a few less. Uh, and so Kia was one of the better press conferences, one of the few press conferences with an actual vehicle. Um, it's funny because everyone watched Hyundai's first and Hyundai was like, it was super lame. It was like, I mean, it was hydrogen. It was like renewable stuff, but like, nothing it could have been an email and then kia was like here's our van in person everyone's like oh my gosh um so yeah <laughs> pbv which is hard to say and i also keep getting the letters mixed up um but right. platform beyond vehicle is kind of the headlining thing um so pbv stands for platform beyond vehicle now what's slightly confusing i'll pause um hyundai at ces 2020 put out a PBV, which stood for okay. Purpose Built Vehicle, which no. is not this. <laughs> <laughs> That's confusing because Kia and yeah. Hyundai are obviously, you know, they're yeah. under the same umbrella. So and it, that's it's, interesting. It, it's interesting. And it's kind of funny because it actually was similar to this, but like literally Purpose Built Vehicle makes you think like built for a specific thing, whereas Platform Beyond Vehicle, Kia's whole platform is like, modularized everything you want a pickup bed go for it you want commercial van back on, on the back go for it like it's just interesting but yeah that's basically pbv platform beyond vehicle is a new platform just like egmp is a platform we all know electric uh i forget the acronym but modular global electric modular global platform um so it's a platform on which they will build electric vehicles so alongside the pbv announcement they mentioned specific vehicles which are pv not pbv but pv5 that's the main concept they're showing off um, which is a cool looking van there's also going to be a pv7 which is a larger one a bit more range larger space more storage capacity uh, and then the small pv1 which is agile small think like kyle's reno twizzy but like last mile delivery solution mindset um, which is Really cool. I love the small things. Uh, but the van is really awesome. It's very um, utilitarian, very, very clean. I mean, they're using like white, just as the blatant color scheme, white, super light, like almost pastel colors. And the booth th itself is incredible. So that was the press conference. And then Kia is now at CES in the main like West Hall where all the vehicles are with a huge, huge booth. Probably maybe tied for the biggest, I'm not sure. Um, 
and it's impressive like four main colorways create four different sections in the booth and each section focuses on something like one has like the pv1 the pv7 pv5 another one's just showing the pv5 and it's you can like walk around it and not quite interact with it you can't you're supposed to not touch it but you think you can see inside you can see all the nice soft all these the four colors they chose were really soft and neutral like pastel kind of blue pinkish uh yellow and green um and the van itself is just set up in different sections around the booth with how useful it could be and even the booth itself has like lots of really impressive projection screen mapping technology to show off what it could do it, it's 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 the most visually appealing booth, maybe besides TOG, um, which not many people know about. Maybe we can do a podcast on TOG someday, just discussing the Turkish auto manu manufacturing uh, <laughs> business. Uh, it looks like yeah. Avatar. Um, basically like Avatar, like like the water world thing. Um, cool. But yeah, but Kia, this van is so sick. It's So it, it seems to be at the moment mostly aimed at con commercial use. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't know if that'll be its entire use um, because I could see this van selling like hotcakes in Boulder. I mean, you could like build it into a sleeper. It's so intentionally modularized where you could like have more or less seats. You could create a sleeping platform and stuff. And you could even have the modularization be a piece of how you use it. Like you could have like, I don't know, a bed made out of this like to work with the integrated rail system. And then when you're not taking your van out camping, you could remove the bed, store it in your garage or something, and then put in normal seats, like, super easily. And it's not like completely rebuilding a vehicle. So I wow. think it has a lot of interesting potential. And they took the modularization further. I mean, there's the rail systems inside, so the seats can move around wherever you need them to be. There's rails in the sides of the actual walls, which work both inside and outside the vehicle. So if something was like mounted on the inside of the vehicle and you had to like, not just the outside on site or something, including like wall outlets. You could just do that. Literally wall outlets, like one of the things that they showed, like being just modular. Nice. So I, appa apparently these rails are powered somehow, which would be huh. super cool to test. So yeah, I'm so freaking intrigued. Um, yeah, me too. I think it's a really cool approach. I think about one, like the customization, especially, I mean, personally, that would be awesome if we could just customize our cars, but from the commercial point of view that are really specific use cases, like I want to electrify my fleet, but I need it to be just like this or just like that. I see the appeal of that. Yep. I also think that obviously modularizing it to try to make it a more standardized process is intriguing. I think it's probably also a bit difficult. I mean, I think that in some ways it'll cut costs rather than trying to like customize a car from the bottom up, but instead use these different modular pieces. So it'll be interesting to see like how really easy that is and the price surrounding these, because of course, customization is kind of a premium offering, but how that will be uh, available to folks. I also love the sound uh, of the, of the booth. I think that Kia in general has been bringing a lot to the forefront of the EV world, they've really been delivering on what they've been putting out there. R people are really happy with the EV9 and we're looking forward to the other models coming on. So it seems like they're not just talking the talk, but they're walking the walk. But also when you see big booths like this, I know that I've seen it from some automakers or just companies in general where I'm like, why did you, why are you putting on such a big show? Like, are you trying yeah. to cover up something? But it seems like Kia is like, kind of matching up with what they're saying and what they're doing. What do you think? Yeah, I think they're doing it. And and I mean, first of all, the, though the PV5 is a concept, like all these things that here are concept cars, the Kia EV9 was a concept and it came out looking pretty close. Like Kia, to Kia's credit, uh, credit it's, it's impressive how much they hone in on the concept uh, design language when they actually bring it to market, which is so cool. Because that's some of the issue, especially with CES. CES is known for lots of crazy, weird concept cars. I mean, Honda just unveiled their Vision Zero concepts, which are the most concepty concepts I've ever seen. Uh, <laughs> whole rant. But uh, Kia is actually probably going to come to fruition pretty close to this. Um, and because it's commercial-based, well, because it's a concept, we don't know pricing yet, but because it's commercial-based, um, pricing won't be as big of a deal, um, partially because it, it, they'll be able to sell themselves with how modular it is. Um, part of the modularization, we already talked about the inside, um, but the outside is actually 
another piece. The whole back of the van could be lifted up and moved. And they had this whole little cute little display of like one fourth scale vans having this done. Uh, the back of the van could be like pulled off and the truck bed could be put on. So then you suddenly have a truck bed. Or you that's could have so cool. a back of a van that's a panel van. So no windows, like just utilitarian or the back of a van that has windows for like passenger like mindset. So commercial and then bring it over to consumer if they see that there's enough of a market or interest for it. And I think the fact that they're doing this at this show is really cool because it caters to both. There's plenty of people here that are industry experts. They're industry literally cross shopping. I mean, the people mm -hmm. people are here from Ford or you know other companies that are like, we might need some solution for something we're working on. And so it's it's a lot of business to business stuff here, but also somewhat of a business to consumer, even with just the headlines. So the fact that Kia had a great press conference has a great booth. I mean, that generates lots of headlines. You get lots of clips and images of what this all looks like. So I think they're really knocking it out of the park. Um, all the people are super nice. The Kia reps that I've met. Uh, I just, I, I can't wait. Um, in, in terms of timeline, I guess we could touch on that. It's it looking like 2025 is kind of when the plant should be online in South Korea. So hmm. maybe around that time or shortly after for initial deliveries. Um, we don't actually know the exact market like availability. I'm sure this will be a US thing, but like I'm sure it'll start in South Korea like a lot of Kia things do and then emanate outwards from there. That factory mm -hmm. in South Korea um, is planning to make 150,000 vehicles annually. So wow. that would be impressive, uh, especially for a commercial minded factory. Um, you know, commercial vehicles don't typically have the same sales numbers as uh, consumer right. in terms of the whole grand scheme of things. So mm -hmm. it's, it's interesting. 2025 could be a huge year for a lot of things as we discussed on other topics. Um, but they, even in the press conference, they mentioned the EV5 might be coming in 2025, which is cool. That's, that's a mm. consumer car. I'm super curious about. So Right. The sooner, the better. And with these timelines, you know, we, we hope that they're going to be met and everything like that. But of course, like you were saying, this is a concept, but I think we were interested in covering this because I also don't think that we've really optimized how we build EVs and there's still a lot of experimentation going on. So is modular a way that is scalable that would work beyond commercial, or is that really key to commercializing our fleets, which we know are a huge factor in the greenhouse gases that go out into our atmosphere. Um, so it's, I think it's a cool approach to look at. I also think it's interesting to get your perspective from how this is being presented to the public, to other businesses, and what the real advantages are there. Of course, I think if it's going to work in the commercial space, I think a lot of things that hold back making fleets electric is you know, the range that they can get and how efficient that these EVs are so you can continue doing the work that you're doing just have it electrified. Uh, so of course that is curious about how um, this isn't a topic for this conversation, but I think fleet electrification in general, we want to keep covering that and how they're going to charge them. You know, is it level two? Is it fast charging? Is it public? Is it private? All those interesting things. Is there anything else at CES that has caught your eye uh, regarding either Kia or something similar? Well, I guess um, to you mentioned charging. Um, they did talk a little tiny bit like touched on it of like the hive mind type things for these vehicles. Um, so I mentioned the pickup back, like the van back, the high roof option. There's also a robo taxi option. And so that brings into mind all the hmm. initially just the hive mind, maybe of like all the vehicles interacting with each other and the chargers. And so basically that optimizes charging. Like if the vehicle's telling the driver, Hey, now's the best time to charge at this location, given where the fleet is like it, it makes a lot of sense for that to happen. Like that mm. takes out the human error, but also the human necess necessity to calculate. Um, but even in the future, looking way forward, robo taxis, that's, that's all into this mindset. They're, they're taking all that into consideration when planning this vehicle. So they are definitely future proofing it quite a bit, I think. So I'm really excited to see how that all unfolds. Um, but the modularization is the big headlining piece of this. Um, including the fact that they said like, this is going to be weldless, like no welding needed standardized kit type, like they send kits and people can like build them themselves, or I guess, uh, you know, whatever consumer, uh, commercial consumers can build them themselves. Um, 
and then even plopping the bed off in the van like it's all like unique um i guess things that key is coming up with solutions of how to connect everything without needing welding so they're, they're li literally looking at every single piece and even within the van like the steering wheel folds up and becomes a lamp like what oh, whoa <laughs> what? i love this I love well, this approach of like thinking about everything and yeah. from the micro to the macro, like how are we building an entire, and we, I say this a lot, especially about Tesla, cause they did build an ecosystem, but how are we going to build like a comprehensive electric platform? Yes. Yeah, like hmm. very comprehensive, like for a concept, it's amazing how much has been considered. Although it is funny, like when I zoomed in on the interior, there's like an iPad Pro as the infotainment, which I don't think was actually going to be the case. But hmm. I mean, that it could seems be. like that, some prototype display <laughs> that. Yeah, it, it looks great. So it's a very easy off the shelf solution that they could just plop on there and be like, yep, call it a day. Um, exactly. So, yeah, it's it's not as cringy as VinFast display, which is an iPad. And instead of having like a website that you could click on, it was a photo and you could like close the photo and see the photo library in the live iPad. It's just hilarious. Uh, a lot that's of funny things. Right now <laughs> at CES, that's what it, their yeah. display is like. Okay. A lot mm. of funny things at CES and there's, there's a whole lot more we can unpack and hopefully touch on with, with more podcasts, but all, all this to say Kia is grabbing a lot of attention. It's constantly the busiest booth as well. Maybe Tog has a more visually impressive booth from initially, but I think Kia is honestly is the best booth, at least the ones I've seen. There's a lot of really great ones. Like there, there's easily a top 10 that are all just incredible, but Kia makes me feel the most cozy, which is oh. crazy given that it's a commercial product they're kind of pushing. So maybe That's they're bridging true. that gap of like raw utilitarian uncomfort with like, hey, this is somewhere you'd actually want to work. Like, if your job is driving a commercial vehicle, this would make you want to do your job. Hmm. That's a good point. I mean, it sounds like either way, they're making something that's attractive from the actual, I can drive and use this to how they're displaying it to you and other people around there. I know I like their display at the LA Auto Show. And if, you know, it, I'm sure so much money and effort goes into making those. And hopefully it pays off. I do hope it's not just a front, like this is what we're dreaming of, but that they will continue to deliver on their promises, which is what we all want to see in the EV space. There's a lot, there's a lot of dreaming, which is great. But um, sometimes I think things are announced far too far ahead of anything really coming out. But hopefully, yeah, Kia will stay on this track of, I mean, becoming a really competitive player in this space. I really love it. I think yeah. some people might have not expected this from them. So maybe yeah. they're pulling a little bit of an underdog. Yeah. It's and it's awesome. I'm totally here for it. Um, all the Hyundai Kia Genesis stuff here is pretty fascinating. Um, Hyundai has so many other companies I didn't even realize exactly, like Mobis, and um, you know, like they have the Ionic Five that like rotates all four wheels. And actually, um, Kia has a little bit of that tech in the PV1, the small like last mile transport. Like the wheels do kind of do the like rotate and the thing can just pull straight in and pull straight out like it's cool it's awesome all, all these technologies are spreading throughout the korean companies and there's so many korean companies here beyond kia hyundai like a lot of smaller ones that you probably only really know if you're korea i keep forgetting this is a world show like tog doesn't yeah. sell a vehicle in the u.s and probably won't but they sell a lot of vehicles They're to here. people in turkey huh. and other countries maybe and those other countries are here so tog is literally here and don't they're not here for the U.S., which is, huh. yeah, it's, it's good that to That is really interesting. Know. It's not yeah, all about yeah, the it's US. Not just, <laughs> No, it's not just about the U.S. or North America. You know, it's just, it's held in LA, I mean, Las Vegas, because probably it's Las Vegas, you know? It's yep. where you can have these big shows, and it's a bit of a an international spot to come visit. So that's something to keep in mind, too, because I love to keep a global perspective. So thanks for paying such close attention so that you can continue to tell me and our audience about what you're seeing at CES. would love to follow up on other things that you um, have found out and observed while you were there. And we will see what Kia does next. I think this modular approach is really interesting, especially in the fleet space. And of course, yeah, we'd love to trick out our own van life, <laughs> Kia lifestyle oh, yeah. EV. That It'd would be, a be great, really fun. Francie. It would be the best 
podcast studio, remote it podcast would. studio. Like, I'm not even kidding. <laughs> it really would. I, I really think we should keep dreaming about that and, you know, think about it would be a great road trip or two. I mean, I know I'm oh, yeah. really excited for the potential of that. BWID buzz. That's, mm-hmm. I would love a canoe, but that's not really out there. But things like this uh, really get me excited. I'm just, I, I'm not patient enough. I want it to come on the market <laughs> sooner. I know. <laughs> we're, we're in this weird, this weird phase of everything's ramping up faster than we can believe, but we still have to be patient. It's like both things yeah. are true at, at the same time. Uh huh. And keep yeah. our expectations, you know, reasonable. I'd say. Yep. Yep. So, Super excited yeah. for Kia. I'm curious what everyone else in the audience thinks of Kia just as a whole. I mean, they had some weird stuff with some of their combustion cars, but like in the electrification space, I just think in the design, like they're just killing it. And Kyle has been spending time with the EV9. I am going to the EV9 event next week in uh, California. And nice. there's, there's a lot happening with that car. Colton wants to buy one. Like, <laughs> where? yeah, Kia. They're- they're doing it. Kia, go Kia. Yeah, let us know what you think in the comments if you have any, have any questions uh, that Jordan might be able to answer about the CES event. Uh, and yeah, we'll see what happens. Thank and you for coming on, Jordan. Yeah. Yeah, I always happy to be on. And yeah, if you guys are in the comments, let us know if there's anything else at CES that really like piques your interest and you want us to talk about because there's so much here. It's like almost impossible to cover all of it. But if you want us to hone in and dive in on something, we will do it. Yeah. Certainly. Yeah. Good, good ad. Definitely let us know. We will read the comments and try to focus in on what you think might be cool. If, if you wish you were at CES and you got to dive into a certain booth or company, let us know. We will see you next time on the Out of Spec podcast.